everyone, I am with Amy in the Kitchen, which is really funny because that's the name of her first food blog, <laughs> Amy in the Kitchen. She has a very popular food blog now, which is all about sourdough. And after we make her a wonderful sourdough bread, it's going to be incorporated into my recipe, which is kimchi grilled cheese sandwich, which is on the blog, and so I'm so excited. You only need a few ingredients, a sourdough starter, and what is, what is that? What's sourdough starter? Flour and water that is capturing the wild yeast and bacteria that's in the environment. They get in here, they eat it, they multiply, and they produce gases that form these little bubbles and make everything rise, and that's what makes bread rise. So to get started, you need an actual sourdough starter and I fed mine. So I'm gonna add 50 grams of this sourdough starter to my bowl. To this, I'm gonna add 350 grams of water. We're gonna add 10 grams of salt. So I think that's about two teaspoons. I like to use the whisk at this point just to incorporate all that into the water because when we put okay. the flour in, it'll help, you know, distribute that starter. Okay, so now that I have all that starter kind of incorporated into the water, I'm gonna add the flour. In this recipe, we're gonna weigh out 500 grams. Again, if you use a scale, it's just gonna give you like the most accurate result, results every single time. What we're trying to do is just get this water and flour to incorporate with each other. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna look like a big shaggy, we call it a shaggy mass. Once you have that done, just cover the Don't bowl. even shape it, just no, cover it. Yeah, we, what, what we wanna do is let this rest for about one hour. So it's been an hour and this, dough has just been sitting here absorbing all the water right mm -hmm. so now we're going to start working on the gluten development okay so you'll want to wet your hand with some water that's going to keep the dough from sticking so you just reach underneath the dough on one side pull it up and over turn the bowl grab the next side pull it up and over and you're just going to repeat that until you go full circle in the bowl. Cover the bowl and let this sit for about 30 minutes and we're gonna repeat that. And then once we uh, repeat that, you'll let this sit for about seven hours, depending on the temperature of your kitchen, but you want it to rise, um, I think it's about 50% in the bowl. We have our dough in bowl and you but it has some bubbles on the top and now it's ready to shape so I'm just going to take a very very small amount of flour and I'm going to turn this dough out onto the countertop so we're just going to do a really simple shape on this I'm going to pull one side up and over and then I'm going to repeat that with this other side again just pull up and over and if you need to use a bench scraper to kind of help you, you know, lift the dough off of the, the uh, counter, just do that. And then that's the fourth time that I just kind of went around. And so just, it's just four times, mm -hmm. four times, okay. And Got then it. you're going to turn this over, okay? The top looks nice and smooth. And what I'm gonna do is use my hands to kind of cup and pull the dough and what that's doing is creating a skin mm -hmm. on the top okay mm -hmm. so yeah. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this dough up and I'm gonna put it right into the center of a piece of parchment cake so we're gonna take this parchment and we're gonna use it like a sling and lift the dough up and into this bowl mm -hmm. and this is where we're gonna have our second rise right and this is only gonna take about an hour or so. So let's cover it. cover it like we did. We're gonna leave it on the countertop. Okay. We have had this Dutch oven heating in the oven at 450 for about 30 minutes. We are gonna transfer our dough to the Dutch oven very, very carefully. What I'm gonna do is use this parchment paper to lift the dough up and into the Dutch oven, okay? I'm gonna use- How easy. 
a little razor blade okay. to make it score on the top. We've let it cool, so it's time to slice it. And we're gonna do kind of thick, because we got a thick sandwich here. So first you wanna butter the outside of these pieces. Two slices of cheddar, two slices of gouda, and then we want our kimchi, which is fermented cabbage, actually really good for your gut. A lot of probiotics in here, and it gives it that nice Korean flavor. So you can use as much or as little as you like. I did about two tablespoons of our sandwich together, and then we're gonna move over to the stove. So, so we've got a medium high heat in a cast iron, and now we're gonna flip it, and you're gonna see how beautiful and golden brown it is. Be very careful on this yeah, first flip. Be, Look be at careful. that. Wow. Look how gorgeous that is. Yeah. So our kimchi grilled cheese is ready. Look at that cheese just mm. oozing out. <laughs> Yum. Oh my goodness. And we're gonna give this little bad boy a taste. Look at that cheese. Oh, this is ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> and I wish that you could smell it. It smells yes. amazing. So, so Amy, you do the honors okay. of cutting the kimchi grilled cheese made with Amy's Starter bread, sourdough bread. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Mm -hmm. mm. Totally worth the mess. <laughs> That's a lot of cheese. It is. And it goes well with the kimchi. Mm. So, you guys, you have to go to Little Spoon Farm and check out her beginner sourdough recipe link. And then to get the kimchi grilled cheese, go to Asian. Caucasian.com and search kimchi grilled cheese and we'll see you back for another recipe.